The next one we want to look at is amines. So amines being um, having the functional group called an amino group, which is based on NH3, but with one or more hydrogen being replaced by alkyl groups. So the naming for these is alkyl amine. So the alkyl group um, with amine on the end. So for example, ethyl amine being this molecule down here, where we can see we've got two hydrogens along here. So an ethane chain, then with the amine group at the end of the molecule. So that nitrogen has one, that ammonia molecule has one of the hydrogens replaced with this ethyl chain, and it's still got its two existing hydrogens. So there's particular steps that need to be followed in order to name these um, because they have, they can go many different ways depending on how many groups are, um, how many of the hydrogens are replaced with R groups. So the first thing we need to do is name each alkyl group. So for example, in ethyl amine, we've only got one alkyl group. So we just name it as ethyl. Um, then you need to place each alkyl group in alphabetical order and use multipliers when they're required. So for example, if you've got an ethyl group here, and then if you were to have a methyl group here, you would need to say ethyl methyl amine, um, putting them in alphabetical order. If you had an ethyl group here, a methyl group here, and a methyl group here, you'd have to call it ethyl dimethyl amine. So to say that you've got one ethyl group and then two methyl groups, and obviously putting that in alphabetical order, not based on the multipliers, based on the original stem name of the alkyl group. Then the final thing you have to do is just add the suffix of amine to the end of the name. And so we can see this here is just our general structure. So we've got an R group and it's based off an ammonium molecule. We've got an R group and then we've got these two hydrogen groups remaining here, but either of these can also be replaced with R groups. So whether that's an R group there, an R prime group there and a hydrogen or an R group here, an R prime group here and an R double prime group here, just depending on how many of the hydrogens are replaced with the um, alkyl groups. So with amines, we've got primary amines, secondary amines, and tertiary amines. So similar with our concept of primary, secondary, and tertiary with alcohols, um, amines have a similar kind of concept. So a primary amine is going to mean that the nitrogen atom is bonded to one carbon atom. So it's saying that the nitrogen um, in from the original ammonia molecule only one of the hydrogens um, from NH3 has been replaced by an alkyl group. Um, so the nitrogen is only bonded to one other carbon atom. In secondary amines, the nitrogen atom is bonded to two carbon atoms. And so what this means is that two of the original carbon, um, sorry, two of the original hydrogen molecules from the original ammonia molecule have been replaced by alkyl groups. So instead of it being the original NH3 molecule, it's only got one of those existing hydrogens left from the NH3 because two of those have been replaced by alkyl chains or by like an alkane based chain. Then a tertiary amine is going to mean that the nitrogen atom is bonded to three carbon atoms. And so this means that from the original ammonia molecule, there is no existing hydrogen atoms left over so from the NH3, all of those three hydrogens have been replaced by alkyl groups. So each of these, um, it's nitrogen with an R group, an R prime group, and an R double prime group. So making it a tertiary amine because the nitrogen is bonded to three carbon atoms, three carbon atoms from three separate bonds. So some examples which we can look at here is we'll start off with a basic one. So this being methylamine. So this basically means with methylamine, we've got the original nitrogen molecule from the ammonia. And we can see that we've got two hydrogens left over. And one of the hydrogens from the original ammonia molecule has been replaced with what we can see is a methyl group. So a methane chain branch. So one carbon long. 
The next one we can see is ethylmethylamine. So with this one, it's named in alphabetical order, ethylmethylamine. So we know ethyl means that it is a two carbon long branch and methyl means that it's a one carbon long branch. And so because we've got two branches, we can identify that this means that there must have been two hydrogens from the original ammonia molecule replaced with alkyl groups. So we can see from this diagram here, from the structure, we, we've got one original remaining hydrogen on the ammonia molecule, but then we can see we've got one replaced with a methyl group here. So we've got a singular carbon branched off from over here. And from this one here, we can see we've got two carbons branched off from this section here. So that being our ethane chain, our ethyl section, and that being our methyl chain there, the methyl section of the name. So hence this is ethyl methyl amine. And so what we can notice about these is that methyl amine, the nitrogen is bonded to only one other carbon atom, hence making this a primary amine. With ethyl methyl amine, the nitrogen is bonded to one, two other carbon atoms, hence making this a secondary amine. Our next functional group we're going to look at is amides. So amides have a carbonyl group attached to an amine molecule. And so the way which these are named is we have the name of the alkane plus amide. So for example, and that makes it an alkanamide. So for example, ethanamide. So ethanamide being this molecule down the bottom here, which we can see we've got an ethane chain being one, two carbons long. Um, and then it's connected to the amine part of the molecule um, where there's only been one of the hydrogens from the original ammonia molecule replaced with this ethane chain. But then we can also notice that the closest carbon to the original ammonia molecule and to the nitrogen atom has a carbonyl group, this double bonded oxygen on it, hence making this an amide as opposed to an amine. So with these ones here, we also need to have a naming process because they are quite complex to name due to all of the um, substituted groups, which can go in the location of where the hydrogens were in the original ammonium molecule. So it's very similar to naming amines, where first of all, we must identify the main chain. So that's the main chain is the one which contains the carbon with the double bonded oxygen, so the carbonyl group. And so that's obviously in ethanamide, that's this chain here where we can see we've got two carbons, um, the one closest to the nitrogen having the double bonded oxygen carbonyl group. We then need to number the carbonyl chain as carbon number one. So this here being carbon number one, that being carbon number two, etc., etc. And that's just our prioritization of functional groups because we want to show that um, the amide section of this chain is the priority. The next thing we need to do is add the suffix amide to the main chain. So this is saying that um, we're putting amide on the end. For example, in ethanamide, we've got to say, we've got amide on the end of the name to say it's based off the um, ammonia molecule. So for example, in ethanamide, we've got the ethane chain, and then we add amide to the end to say we've got this double bonded oxygen and this based off ammonia group. Finally, this is the one step which is quite different from the amines, but we have to use N to represent alkyl groups bonded to the nitrogen atom. And so that's in our more complex amines. So for example, this is going to be our main chain here because it's got the carbonyl group, but we can also have alkyl groups bonded off here, which won't have the double bonded oxygen in them. So there will just be a general alkyl group. So for example, we could have one carbon bonded off here, and so that would be an N-methyl group. So the N representing that the methyl group is coming off the nitrogen atom. And so the general structure of these can be shown in this small diagram over here, where we've got an R group 
which has the carbon with the double bonded oxygen, so the carbonyl group. And so that's our main chain, it's bonded to the nitrogen. And then we can see here we've got R prime and R double prime. So the R prime and R double prime could either be hydrogen molecule, hydrogen atoms to make that more close to the original ammonium molecule, or they could be alkyl groups. So being methyl groups, ethyl groups, propyl groups, etc. Um, and it could be one or both of those that's replaced from the original ammonium molecule. So some examples we can look at with these, we'll start off with a simple one, that being methanamide. So what we can see with methanamide is we've got one carbon branched off the nitrogen molecule. And so this nitrogen molecule still has two original hydrogens from the original ammonia molecule. So um, it doesn't have any alkyl groups, it's just got the main chain. And so we can see the carbonyl group is there as well, making this an amide as opposed to an amine. And so this one here being methanamide because it's only got one carbon in its main chain. This one here, the next one, N-methylpropanamide, is a bit more complex um, in that it is got an N-methyl group. And so that's saying that we've got a methyl group branched off the nitrogen, so we've only got one original existing hydrogen from the original ammonium molecule. So when we look at the end, the suffix of the molecule, which is what we always do first, we've got propanamide. And so that's suggesting that our main chain, um, the chain with the carbonyl group, the double bonded oxygen, is going to be a propane chain. So it's going to be three carbons long. So that's one, two, three. And then on the third one, we've got the carbonyl group, the double bonded oxygen, and then that is closest to the nitrogen. So we can see that's bonded to the nitrogen there. And instead of having a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here, we've replaced one of these hydrogens from the original ammonia molecule with a methyl group. So with one carbon, making that an N-methyl group because we name this as being N-methyl. It's a methyl group coming off the nitrogen atom.